Hello, Gaston County. Welcome to episode number 39 of Gaston's Great. That's correct. I said episode number 39. If you're surprised as I am that we made it this far, um, thank you for those that are listening out there. This is a podcast highlighting some of the great things happening in and around Gaston County. I'm your host, Stephen Long, and we are coming to you once again from the worldwide headquarters of GSM Services right here in downtown Gastonia. And we are looking forward to having some great discussions in the coming weeks and months. We simply believe in discussing more of the reasons why Gaston's great. We are highlighting another great organization this week and have Julianne Lehman and Robert Stroud with us. Julianne is the Keep Gastonia Beautiful Administrator, and Robert is the Municipal Arborist with the City of Gastonia. Julianne and Robert, it's great to have you on, and welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having us. Thank you. So we're going to get right to it and maybe start with you, Julianne, if you don't mind. Just tell us a little bit about yourself and anything that you'd like to share. Sure. So I'm a northern transplant. I actually moved here from Michigan in 2006. Um, we okay. blindly moved to the state of North Carolina. <laughs> Honestly, had never been to North Carolina. Drove our moving van in here. That was the first time we entered city limits of Gastonia. And here we are. And... Wow, we've made quite a life for is ourselves. Is this where you run out of gas? or We actually chose to live here. So my husband is a teacher, and he had gotten his first job at Stanley Middle School. Okay. And it wasn't his thing. Middle school was not his thing. So now he's at South Point High School. But um, this is literally where we were like, oh, this is probably the city we should land in. And here we are. And then my sister moved down. My parents moved down. My oh, grandparents wow. moved down. My cousin moved. We brought everybody. So, um now we have two kids. We have two boys, a seven-year-old and a nine-year-old, and they have... Keep you busy, I'm They sure. keep us very busy, so we'll talk about that down the road, but, um, I mean, that's just, that's us in a little, little bit of a nutshell. So, so you brought the entire clan the whole down family. here. Well, that's great. Robert, what about you? Um, yeah, my, my story's a lot less busy than that. <laughs> uh, I was born here. I was okay. raised here. I've lived here my entire life. Um you can't hear it in my accent. I don't really have a southern accent. I don't know where it went. <laughs> um, but, yeah, my whole family uh, moved here. Well, they moved here from Chicago, and I think okay. I grew up around that, and that's sort of where some of my accent comes from. Um, but, yeah, I've just I've loved living in this part of the state for so long. You have uh, you know, the mountains nearby. I developed an affinity for the outdoors and all things environmental at a very early age. Um, I remember – hearing about forestry as a job uh, when I was in like the fifth grade. And I just, I knew him. I was like, that's it. That's the thing that I'm going to do. That settled. Now we'll just figure out what we're going to eat for lunch or whatever the other decision was. <laughs> um, yeah. So it's, it's a very straightforward life of, I want to work in trees and now I work in trees. Very good. And uh, yeah, I, I did it for um, the local government because they own the most trees. <laughs> generally speaking. That's interesting. I don't think I would have thought that. And that's probably a first on our podcast for somebody saying that I'm living trees. Yeah. So, so that's great. So, well, I'm, we'll see where that goes for the for the rest of this episode. So I appreciate you guys um, sharing a little bit of your background. And uh, maybe Julianne, we'll come back to you. Can you kind of share how did you get involved and, and end up being involved with Keep Guests Telling You Beautiful? Sure. So when I f we first moved here, I said, well, I want to do a job that does something in the city, the community, helping do something. I didn't know where that was going to take me. So I applied for a job called Gastonia Sister Cities, which yep. I have taken one of your nieces on our trip to Germany, yeah, actually. Yep, and sure um, I actually didn't get the job because I didn't speak Spanish. And they said, well, we might have another job for you. So I landed at the city anyways doing, um, I helped first-time home buyers, so counseling them on how to buy their first home. I did that from 2007 until 2019. I also ended up landing that Sister Cities job after all. The housing market was crashing, and they said, take this on anyways, so I was doing the two jobs. And then when the Keep Gas Any Beautiful job opened up, I said, I think I'm just going to wheel my chair into that office. That was like literally my dream job, just to do something that has more of a reach and makes more of an impact in the city, so... Here I am. So I appreciate you sharing that. And I don't think a question that we sent, but I'd like to ask if do you know any of the history and how Keep Gas Telling You Beautiful started, or is is that just something that I shouldn't have asked? Well, you should have asked that in the letter. No, I'm just messing, I'm messing, I'm messing. Mess <laughs> so it did start back in 1977. Okay. We had an office at the Shield Museum at the time, and it was just called Clean City. And then over time, we became actually an affiliate with Keep America Beautiful. 
and that's where um, we've had some amazing directors. I'm pretty sure Jenny Stoltz was on that. I think she was, yeah. Um, Pat Johnson had ran it for almost 30 years, and then I stepped into Pat's shoes after she retired. So it's a it's quite a coveted position, I would think, of the city. So And to be clear, I mean, this is part of the city of Gastonia. Correct. Operations, is that the best yes. w- so way to Yes, so we're a unique. So we yeah. are actually a nonprofit, but we're also under okay. the city's umbrella. So our staff is paid by the city. But we also are a 501c3, so we can okay. write grants. We can do some things that are outside the city scope sometimes. Um, but we do, we're, we're a little bit unique for yeah, sure. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I saw, I, I, I did spend a little time on the website. And, yeah. and so it was nice to, you know, when you have your own big page there within the city site, that was nice to see. And and, and I read a little bit about the mission and everything. Sure. And we'll, we'll touch on that. Um, so, Robert, what is your connection to Keep Gastonia Beautiful, and, and how would you describe that? Oh, that's interesting. I have to go back and sort of explain exactly what my position with the city is. Okay. Um, so as the municipal arborist or city arborist, I, um, I I lead up the our urban forestry department, which is not so much a department as it is just me. Okay. <laughs> Uh, and I go between other departments. I work very closely with Parks and Rec. That's sort of my main budget person. Um, I work very closely with KGB and all of our beautification projects. And we, we go to do plantings and things like that. I work with utilities um, and line clearance, all sorts of those things, public works, right of way, street crews, um, you, you name it. Urban forestry kind of just sticks to whoever is, uh, you know, giving us money that day. <laughs> uh, but Julianne and I have, have um, since I've taken over this position a few years ago, Julianne and I have uh, worked together on several projects. Um, she knows that if anything needs to be planted or talked about in a, a, a green or environmentally friendly way, that she can call me. I'm very, um, uh, very eager to, 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 to jump into those sorts of projects. Um, so I actually came to the city uh, through the parks department. I, I just worked part-time at Rankin Lake just because I wanted an outside part-time job. Um, and I did that for a few years. And then um, I had expressed interest to our, our old city arborist, Trip White. I said, yeah, I think I'm going to go somewhere else and, and become an urban forester. Thanks for the, you know, thanks for the job. See you later. Uh, and he's like, well, I think we might have something here opening up. So just stick around and apply for it and see what happens. And I went into my interview and I talked nonstop for an hour straight about how much I love trees and they gave it to me <laughs> and I have not shut up since. Okay. Very good. <laughs> so how long ago was that? Uh, I've been in this I've been going on four years now. Okay. All right. Very Something good. Like that. So yeah, I would assume that, um, keeping guests on you beautiful trees and, and green spaces and that kind of stuff has a lot to do with that. Yeah. Um, there's a lot th- of crossover. There. Yeah. Last time I just picked on too is I never, uh, I think I heard y'all say it earlier was, the, the initials are KGB. It is. Yeah, I was going to talk about that. But it's not a covert operation. <laughs> no. It can be sometimes. Okay. Yeah. When you said it started in the 70s, I was like, is the this 70s a sleeper? And the, <laughs> the 70s and yeah. the KGB, yeah. Oh, well, okay. that's why it was Clean City back then. Yeah. So. Okay. CC. <laughs> <laughs> so um, maybe, Julianne, go back to you. Can you sure. can you share with our listeners, what's the mission of Keep Gas t- Telling You Beautiful? Well, you know, you got to get your quotes out. So our official local mission is to make the community at large knowledgeable and responsible in natural resource conservation, solid waste handling, recycling, litter abatement, and beautification. So that's the the official term. Right. And I, I read, I did read that on the site. Yeah. <laughs> I like to say we keep the city clean and green. Yeah. I mean, it's a little bit simpler. That's good. So this is a question for both of you. Can you I'm not sure this initiative is the right word, but what are some of the initiatives of the organization or programs or things that you guys are kind of involved with or maybe something that our our listeners might be uh, familiar with already? Sure. So like my elevator speech is like we kiss bees, we hug trees, and we clean all the way to the seas. So we are a bee city. That's pretty good. Hey, I thought that myself. So we are, um, the city of Gaston is a bee city, which probably not a lot of people know that, but we are the 74th bee city in the nation. And oh, wow. okay. that's been since 2018. So ever since then, we've been working to educate citizens on the importance of saving bees. So for younger students, we actually received a grant from the Glenn Foundation and have this cute little puppet that her name is Miss Pollinator. And she goes around to schools. Hash, then we had COVID, so she doesn't go out much anymore, but she does fly into some of our events. So we have a Beetopia every year. That's going to be held right across the street here at the Gastonia Farmer's Market on May 21st. 
and it's just to educate people on pollination and bees, and we have a honey tasting and a beezebo and all these fun bee things. Um, it's great for good puns, and uh, it's always a family-friendly thing as well. Can, so. I, can I interject for just, so bees. you said beezebo? A beezebo. Why wouldn't you have called it a gabebo? Oh, well, I believe the Gaston County beekeepers named it the Beezebo. Oh, okay. So. Well, Beezebo. I'll, I'll take my complaint up with them. Okay. It's pretty cool. It's actually a live hive is in this gazebo situation, and they go in and open the hive up, and people can come right up and see it. So, so I'm feeling this, Elizabeth, this is going to be the punniest episode that we've had. Well, we can be very punny. Okay. Yeah. We can be... <laughs> <laughs> also we do lots of litter i mean people i think a lot of people think keep guessing beautiful is just we're just cleaning up the streets right. and yeah. we are just way way more than that right now we are actually partnering up with the catawba river keepers okay. they've installed a litter getter another kind of punny thing um that's at Duhart creek um pump station off of Lowell bethesda road and we're going to be partnering with them to clean that on a, on a monthly basis probably doing like um we're going to be learning what we're really going to be doing in a couple of weeks okay. by collecting the litter, providing reports, and just seeing how much trash is really coming down the river before it gets to the Catawba. And then we're doing a fun thing called plaking. We have lots of, the thing is we have so many fun words. So <laughs> plaking is picking up litter while hiking. So we're working with the Carolina Thread Trail on that to, and our Parks and Rec as well, and the, um, the state park to get little plaking stations where you can pick up bags and okay. pick up trash while you're hiking. That's great. Because there's just litter everywhere, essentially. Mm. But then the big initiative, of course, is our hugging of our trees, and that's where I had to bring my big uh, my big tree fan here. Because he truly general. is the tree. I mean, anything I have ever questions about, any tree, anything, it's Robert. And everybody knows that the city. He's... Yeah, I get strange dozens of calls ranger. from city employees asking about their own personal trees <laughs> on a weekly basis. So, so we've got a really cool thing that I'll let you roll that out. So, yeah, we're uh, so we've started this project uh, last year. I believe council approved it last year, uh, and this is the uh, this upcoming Arbor Day will be the 150th anniversary of the establishing of Arbor Day. Um, and every, every Arbor Day that we do, there's always some big planting project. We bring out, you know, educational materials. We try to bring out schools and children, things like that. Not so much in the last few years, but yeah. normally speaking, that's, that's sort of the case. Mm -hmm. uh, and I believe that the city council wanted to do something ab above and beyond this year to commemorate that 150 years um, um, anniversary of, of the establishment of Arbor Day. Uh, and their idea was to plant 150 trees across the city. Um, and they okay. gave us, you know, a budget to do that with and said, you know, go forth. We trust you. Plant some trees. <laughs> um, well, I I mean, I plant sometimes personally pretty close to 150 trees just about every year. I am I go crazy for planting trees. So I took this idea and just sort of ran with it. And I said, okay, well, rather than just doing the normal, you know, let's put some trees in our parks, put some trees in our right-of-ways, what's, what's the most we can get out of this? What's the, what's the, what's the most the strongest dollar in tree speak that we can get here. Uh, and we broke it down into three phases. Um, the first one was our, our education and outreach, where we took uh, trees to schools, local schools that signed up for this program. Uh, and we had all the kids out there. Um, this was, I think, starting in November mm -hmm. of last year. Uh, and we planted a tree with kids. Uh, sometimes it was one class, uh, you know, maybe a science-focused class. Sometimes it was the entire second grade. Um, there was, uh, we did Highland, uh, uh, school of technology. They brought their earth science club out there after, okay. after class. So we plant the trees, um, and you know, we, we talk about it. We, we have the kids plant the tree with us. Um, and by that, I mean, I do all the planting and they just <laughs> tell me what to do. Yeah. Um, but it's been, the impact of it has been absolutely incredible. I mean, we knew it was going to be fun. We knew it was going to be a good time. It'd be a you know, great thing to do, but just the, the, um, the enthusiasm that all of these kids have shown for trees. You know, I go out and I do my spiel like, oh, why do we need trees? And they're like, photosynthesis, oxygen. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I didn't know that till high school. That's great. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, they know the importance of trees. They know the, uh, <laughs> the beauty of trees. They like, they have so many questions about how old they are. What's the biggest tree you've ever seen? You know, what's that one called? Things like that. 
Um, and we, it's just been this, this overwhelmingly emotional experience. Um, and I really wanted to, this, this phase of the project was not so much to, to just educate kids about the benefits of trees, but to include them in something that's going to be in their community for, you know, potentially, you know, hundreds of years if we did everything correctly. Um, and that's, that, I, that's, that's something that very few people get to I think, experience in their life when you can come back later in your life and look at a tree that you planted when Absolutely, you were a kid and yeah. say, God, I remember that thing was six feet tall. Now look at it. It's shading out this whole area. Uh, it's a very profound experience. I wanted to share that with as many people as I possibly could. Uh, so that's, that's where we started there. We did the school. And we're, we're still doing that, by the way. More schools have signed up for more tree plantings here into the spring. We just had to get over the winter, winter hump. Um, and then, and then phase two of this, this project, um, was to try and reestablish, uh, some of the canopy that we've lost, uh, across the city. I mean, in any urban environment, you're going to lose canopy either intentionally through development or unintentionally through things like climate fluctuation, you know, um, pest problems that you couldn't see coming, things like that. Uh, so in a lot of our natural areas, we've we've just lost canopy cover, and that's habitat for wildlife. That ties into the bee city thing. It's habitat for pollinators. Um, so I, you know, we we got a bunch of saplings from the uh, the North Carolina Forest Service, and we've just been taking them out into the woods and planting them. I mean, just dozens and dozens. By the way, we're blowing way past the 150, 150 trees. Yeah. I was going to ask you this. I said this math is sounding like it's a lot more than that. It's a lot more than that. We yeah. can't well, that's tell you good. The, the final that's number good. we can't tell you yet. We can't though. tell you yet. <laughs> that's going to be a surprise. But it, it you have to kill us. This is a KGB yeah, point. This yeah. is the KGB yeah. portion. This is where the KGB <laughs> portion comes <laughs> into it. Uh, so yeah, we, we've been going out and doing what I consider to just be that uh, that sort of pure forestry work, which is putting trees in the forest and letting them do the thing that they do. Just, just grow and be beautiful in their own right, in their own yeah. space, not so much for the benefit of humans, you know, to look at, but just to, to be there to do the thing that we need them to do. Uh, and then the final phase is uh, it's more of the traditional stuff. We're going into some of the some of our older parks, Lineberger Park being a, a pretty great example, that have just lost a lot of their their large canopy trees over the last few years just from aging out. Uh, yeah. You know, they've, they've just been there for a long Park's time. Park's been there a long time. Yes. Long time. Uh, so we're, and I'm using this as a, as a really good opportunity to, um, you know, help train some of the park staff and landscape staff on, you know, the importance of like establishing, you know, a, a varying level of, of canopy trees and parks and things like that. So that when you lose the big ones, you've got the next one, in, you know, in series coming up and that's, we're doing that right now and it should be finished. Uh, and then there's a teeny tiny little pet project on the very end of this. Um, and that is, I'm, I'm planting, a, a an arboretum at the end of the Greenway. And Arboretum is essentially just a, a collection of trees. We have just cultivated, or I'm sorry, curated this, this selection of trees that I like, I think are very important, um, that have significant value to me, and I'm planting them in this little area. And we'll have a little marker there at the end, and it'll be a nice meditative place where people can So go. when you say end of the Greenway, where specifically are you... Right, yeah, because the greenway is... Or, is this, or is, this, is this another one of those KGB secrets that you can't... <laughs> yeah, like can't when you enter from the armory, that side. Yeah. Okay. I was tempted to say, just walk and you'll find yeah. it. But, uh, yeah, it's at the armory. Yeah, I mean, I've ran, I mean, I have, I'm in a group that we, we run that section of the greenway on every Sunday morning. So yeah. I'm very familiar with the armory side and the... Yeah, so you'll start seeing more and more trees, you know, plot up there as, as they come in. So okay. Those, those are being That's very carefully hand-selected one at a time rather than the sort of mass buying of trees that I do for other projects, but that's, that's a very special close to the heart thing that I'm, that I've been working on. So yeah, that was a lot more than just picking up some trash here or there. All right. yeah. All right. We are more than that. <laughs> <laughs> and I really appreciate you mentioned, you really helped us out with, you mentioned two previous episodes. You, we, we had Carolina thread trail on and we had uh, John Searby from the Catawba Riverkeeper on. So yes, two really great organizations that are, it's really nice to have, you know, Riverkeeper are now, uh, you know, located here in, in uh, Gaston County and McCadenville. So, so I, I appreciate you you sharing that. So I'm not sure this will this question applies exactly, but you know I like this question that can you in the way it's exactly worded is can you give a specific example or story related to one of the initiatives where an individual or a family or uh, an area or just something some way to describe kind of a success story related to um, kind of some of the initiatives you guys are involved with. I think this with this tree, I think Robert's got a good story. Okay. 
Uh, yeah. Okay. I know exactly. I feel it in my heart. So. Oh, it's definitely the yeah, one. Yeah. Um, okay. So uh, at one of the schools that we planted the trees at, this is a very, you know, like I said, it's a very profound experience to be around that many young minds, seeing them light up uh, around all this science. Um, but in, in particular, we planted a tree at, uh, I think it was Brookside Elementary. It was. Uh, and towards the end of the, the planting, uh, they, they brought out a young woman, a young girl uh, who's, who's blind. And they brought her over to the tree and they were, they were you know, we did sort of a, l- a little private lesson, I guess, with her. We were holding up the mulch and sh- letting her feel the soil and like the leaves and things like that. And let me tell you. It's a good thing that I had sunglasses and a mask on <laughs> because I was just allergies. Weak. Allergies yeah, were bad. That so day, many huh? allergies <laughs> that day. Um, but it was seeing someone, um, you know, and, and particularly a child, but like seeing someone experience a yeah. tree like that in so much more than the way of just looking at it. Say, oh, that's like we take stuff that we take for granted with our. Like, yeah, we take for granted all the time. Like nothing was left on the floor. Nothing was taken for granted. She was excited about the mulch. She was excited about the little twigs. She was excited about the leaf. And, you know, we named the tree. I think we called that one Mr. Waffles or something. Because yeah, it's a maple mm. tree. Maple syrup. But, oh, that makes um, sense. But yeah. she was just. I mean, number she was 23. Just, thank yeah. you. Exactly. Uh, and she was just floored by it. I was floored by it. I mean, it, it was one of those experiences that just kind of changes you you yeah. know from before to after you're just kind of a different person and uh yeah I mean that that was mine that was that made everything that I've ever done in my life up until that point worth it so that you know the stars aligned and we right. got to yeah. do that um, yeah I, I think my experience in a lot of organizations I'm involved with and things I've gotten to do you, you don't know when that impact's going to occur like yeah. that yeah that's terrific so I'm gonna assume, Julian. You don't have anything to follow that, or do you uh, have? Do you I, do you have one? There's no way. <laughs> I can't follow that at all. That's why well, I said I knew his story. I didn't even fill it in because I said I knew that Robert's story would just trump mine. Well, so. and Julian was. You were there. We were all out. I'm yeah. the I'm yeah. the chest. Like I move all the pieces, get everything ready, and then Robert goes out, digs the holes himself, does the whole. Everybody gives him all the glory, but it was like. Yeah. I think I had a yeah. little bit to do with this. Yeah. <laughs> so you're, the, you're the godfather pulling all the strings, <laughs> exactly. and he gets all the credit. Exactly. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but that's okay. That's why we're civil servants in the end. We don't really care for the, the, the kudos in the yeah. end. So. <laughs> oh, well, that, that was a terrific example, so I appreciate you, you sharing that. Um, and you shared so many examples of this already, but I'm going to ask this question anyway, and that, that could be this one. What you just described, Robert, could answer this question as well, but maybe Julianne, start with you. What, what are you most – can you come up with something that you're most proud of accomplishing at your time with Keep Guests on You Beautiful? Well, I mean, I would say next year it'll be the trees because we'll be done with that. But okay. I think from previous, I took the job in January 2020, had all these amazing ideas, full of energy, and then March, co- March, March strikes. March strikes, yep. and everything <laughs> just stopped. So it gave us a, ta- a chance to just really think, what do we want to do? Where are we going to go? So I actually applied for a grant the community foundation and got that to do a whole bunch of bee stuff over at the farmer's market. So we put up an amazing mural over 270 hours of volunteer time to get this mural up, put some educational beds out there, redid all the front beds with pollinators. Just that was like, we brought some life to a very gray building. And I feel like that was like, okay, check. That felt really good that we could do something during COVID and still, make some sort of impact with through beautification essentially so but again okay the trees will be next year i'll say that i don't i can't steal the thunder right now so is there robert anything you would else add or is your trees and the the, what you know this epic story you just described earlier does that cover it i that was uh that story i it's it's weird to apply the term you know being proud of it because I didn't feel like I did that as much as I just got to be a part of it. Understood. Yeah. Um, Understood. But I'm 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 just kind of in general mm-hmm. proud and uh, very often I'm taken aback at the amount of people who are just just into environmentalism. Oh here. sure. Yeah. We do these sort of you know uh, like education outreach uh, things where I go and talk to people about trees and. You know, when you're when you're on your own thinking about it, it can feel very much like I'm the Lorax. I'm on the side of the trees, and everyone else just wants to cut all of them down all the time. But then you go out and talk to people, and most people would just rather have this natural environment around us. Um, you know, I, I think uh, if you weren't going to answer, I was going to say it that way too. Is the uh, the bee city stuff and the mm-hmm. pollinators thing? Mm-hmm. Just getting the whole community together to talk about how important you know 
like bees and, and not, sure. you know, just bees, but other, other pollinating species were, was a really profound thing. There was no, you know, there's no money to be made in that. There's no, um, you know, there's some art and nice things to look at, but we were just getting together and showing our appreciation for something that goes under the radar most of the time. And it was, it was, it was very validating to see that the community I came from has some of those same, you know, belief, has some of those same beliefs and, and, uh, you know, things that I hold very dear. So, well, I think that's what I'm sort of proud of is just the whole community itself reflecting our, our, our mission. Yeah. I think that uh, my experience is that something that's definitely we've in general, our society and community has become more aware of is, is environmental impact in general, but especially, you know, we hear a lot of this, especially we, when we're at our country, we're trying to hire young people and you hear all these bad things about the younger generation. Well, well I got news for you. That's not our experience in general. Okay. And I've got my kids are 23, 20, and 16. And when it comes to environmental stuff, they can pretty much educate me. Oh, yeah. um, and I've learned quite a bit from from the three of them on that those, those type of topics. And uh, they'll they'll put me in my place pretty yeah, quick. Yeah, they're leading the pack. I tell you, the, some of the high schools we planted trees with, they were. I thought I was going to wow them with some of my you know like college <laughs> learned science. They yeah. were way ahead of me. They got they <laughs> way ahead of me at every turn. So absolutely. So. Um, I'm going to stay, stay with you, Robert, for this next question. So you know, this is a question about um, gas and, I mean, a, a podcast about gas and county and great things happening. And again, uh, uh, some of these questions might, you might end up getting repeat answers, but why would you say Gaston County is better because uh, keep Gaston you beautiful is here? I would say it's better because, and this sort of goes into my, my last answer on that other question um, is just because it serves as this sort of beacon that other people who live in the community can look towards to say that, okay, I'm not the only person who feels that way. You know, it's easy to see litter and things like that, not to harp on litter, but it's easy to see that and think like, oh man, no one here cares. That's low hanging fruit, right? Yes. Low hanging fruit. But it's, it's a real, I mean, it's a lightning rod for this sort of issue, especially when you talk about things like beauty and aesthetics of of a city. Um, but it's, it's easy for people to drive around in this town and say, man, you know, the litter is really bad. No one cares about this place. I'm the only person who would not litter here. <laughs> but when you have organizations like, you know, KGP, uh, Keep Guessing Me Beautiful, it really serves as this, as this beacon to say like, oh, I'm not the only person here that does that. In fact, there's an organization that I can put effort into and who are, you know, working on my behalf, essentially, you know, to help keep this place as nice as I think that it should be. Um, and those things are ju- just just the confirmation that you're not alone in believing that the world deserves to be nicer looking, more beneficial to you know uh, the community, more beneficial to plants and animals, things like that, the environment. Um, I think it just does a lot for people. Um, it, it does a lot for me, and I work here with it. So yeah, regardless what you hear in the how can I word this the media. Yeah. And I don't say local media. I'm talking about more of the mass media. I mean, I, I don't. I don't think I've ever met anyone who really doesn't care about the environment and, and doesn't doesn't want wherever they live to be nicer and better and cleaner. And yep. um, but it seems like sometimes the, there's this narrative that you know this group does and this group does and that kind of thing. And I just don't think that's that's the case. No, I've um, never spoke to an individual person who didn't just right. absolutely love their little piece of property, wherever it is. Absolutely. And they want it to be nice and they want the earthworms and the butterflies and everything. <laughs> that's right. Everyone is a tree hugger. You just got to give them a tree to hug. Absolutely. Julianne, would you answer that any differently or? Oh, well, of course. Mine's more political. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> but, it's, you know, for 45, this is our 45th anniversary this year in 2022. Right, so right. it's our, been our mission, you know, to make this city a beautiful place to live, for citizens to enjoy and live and be proud of. And I think the one thing that we've kind of been a mover and a shaker is that we've installed art, public art. So we have discursus. We have funny names for these things as well. So that's at the corner of 2nd and Marietta, right across from Piedmont Charter um, Elementary. We had that Gilly Do, which was in Center City Park. It's going to be moved somewhere else. So everybody just calm down about that. I've seen lots of things on <laughs> Facebook. Everybody just, it's going to be somewhere else. Just be careful. But her name is Gilly Do. It's a kinetic piece. There's a piece in front of City Hall. And then right now we're working on, we had received a grant from the Glenn Foundation. Thank you so much. A great place to be, B-E-E. And that is a piece that's going to go near the stadium. Oh, okay. Very that good. We actually are reviewing all the artists next week. So that is TBD, but really, really exciting. So that's that'll be our fourth public piece of art 
uh, physical art, not just like murals and things like that, that Keep Guys and Beautiful themselves have paid for and installed. So, yeah, so the, the episode released last week was Community Foundation Run. Yes. And um, I think Aaron Wiggins from Community Foundation mentioned the piece on 2nd Avenue mm -hmm. um, and the grant that was um, that they were involved with and you guys were involved with to, to do that. So that's nice to... We're that's the third reference of I'm a previous you, episode see, this, here. This is this about is partnerships because we can't man. do everything by ourselves. There's just no way. Yeah. So we have to partner Absolutely. with all these other amazing organizations for sure. So, um, Juliana, stay, staying with you, what do you, how do you envision the organization looking like five to ten years down the road? Are there any big plans, any or any, or anything that you could share without you know? I would have to kill you. Yes. <laughs> just kidding. Apparently. I would just love to be a, key, a household name. Like, I just wish people would know and come to us as a resource that we do have such a passion. When Robert was saying, you know, my gosh, if people could just, you know, love their little area of, of the city, that's what we want. We, I would just love if people would just say, wow, Keep Cassidy City Beautiful. I know about them. Yeah. You should know about us. Yeah. We have been out here for 45 years. It's so. one of the best kept seekers around. I'm thinking maybe that's what I'm <laughs> listening to today, that this might be just... We're going to have more followers on Facebook than we ever thought of. We yeah, might have to start our own podcast. Yeah, our, our seven <laughs> listeners are going to just expand the reach, you know, <laughs> unbelievably. <laughs> so, Robert, would you answer that question any any other way, or or you know what, anything in general that you're involved with I'm with the, more trees. the city and yeah? Oh yeah, we're um, and uh, this is probably a more technical answer, uh, but we uh, the city of Gastonia itself, and then by extension the county is in a, a, a transitional phase. Uh, we're going from being kind of a small town to being a medium to large sized sure. town. We're one of the larger suburbs of Charlotte. Um, and you see a lot of things that are reflected on, let's say some of the other suburbs of Charlotte on the other side are sort of happening here and everyone's kind of taking notes from each other. Um, and what's, what's growing in that is, you know, this, this desire to have, a, a sustainable, environmentally friendly plan laid out while we're doing all this development. It's very easy to sign off and say, yes, bring your businesses here, build, build homes, build nice things for people. But if you don't do that in an, a, a, an environmentally conscious and intelligent way, you'll lose something that you'll never get back. Uh, you know, no one's, no one's tearing down a shopping mall to build a forest. It's always the other way around. So sure. um, the way I see us growing um, – and I say us, I mean KGB, but also my little urban forestry department, um, is just making sure that we're ahead of the game as far as what's coming in, what the city's going to look like in 30 or 40 years, and to make sure that we can protect the thing that, you know, we're not going to get back if we lose. Um, and that's that's sort of where I'm going. I'd also like to get someone else working in my department other than just me. <laughs> I talk to myself a lot. so <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah, I think what I've seen uh, with development, especially over the years, I've been around Gaston County my whole life as well, and asking questions about what are the uh, unintended consequences of development as, as opposed to, I mean, there was a time when I don't think that question type of questions were asked. It was yeah. just, let's go. I mean, something that I personally cringe at is, you know, again, personal opinion. It's mm -hmm. not necessarily the opinion of GSM or any of its affiliates. <laughs> um, I cringe when you see the neighborhood that just level everything. Oh. Uh, to build houses yeah. and then the you know then that they may they will come back and replant trees and things i realize that but it just yeah i just cringe when everything is just leveled because it's easier and well one uh, of my first job uh, one of my first tasks when i got this job was um we had an urban forestry consultant at the time um but i uh, helped her in rewriting our tree ordinance so that's no longer the case you can't come in and okay, clear well, out i'm glad to hear that you have you're now required by law to preserve you know trees on your thing and then also the amount that you have to plant back has significantly grown. A lot of Good. native species, things like that. So we're getting very, very uh, technical with what we're requiring developers to do here. And they're, you know, to their, to, you know, to their credit, they're keeping up with us. Oh, good. So. All right. Well, listen, I appreciate you sharing that. So, well, obviously we're going to, we'll finish up with some, you know, we keep guests on you beautiful and make sure the listeners know how to get in touch, volunteer, help, whatever. But is there, is, is there anything I haven't asked but I should have, or anything you'd like to share before we move on to this um, really important questions here? I mean, Shirley? we've got so much to share, but they can follow us, and then they can really delve in themselves. So Okay, very good. So <laughs> We could talk all day, truly, about all the things we do. So Well, we've got all day. I mean, it's, you know, yeah. we're recording this on, what today? what's today? February 9th. It's about 10.44. I mean, you know, we can do this till Saturday if we need to. <laughs> um, so... 
again, I appreciate that. And we're going to get into these again. This is Gaston County podcast, and we're, we have a, some questions that we ask every episode because this is really what your families and your coworkers are really really want to know about the two of you. And then we're going to call this. We I change the name every week. We're going to call this um, the Julianne brought the entire family down here speed round of questions. Great. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So with that said, we're going to start with you, Julianne. What is your favorite Tony's ice cream flavor? I always go for orange sherbet. Orange sherbet. <laughs> that. Mark it here, episode 39. That's the first. Uh, orange sherbet. I don't get it in a shake. If it's a shake, it's a totally different situation. But okay. if it's on a cone, orange sherbet. Wow. Uh, that's, they offered that. I didn't know do. that was on the menu. It is. Hmm. It's incredible. There you go. It might not be from Tony's, but it's in their thing, and I <laughs> scoop me up some. All righty. I don't know. 100-year-old lady here. Robert, <laughs> follow that. <laughs> uh, oh, okay. I am I apologize ahead of time. My hot take is that I don't like cold desserts. Mm. I only eat hot desserts. Now, I'll say this. Here's, here's my meeting you halfway are we questioning this a relationship now yeah this is I, and i don't know what it is i just like i like and like you're from gastonia too from gastonia too. i've had tony's many times and i'm not gonna like you know have a bite of ice cream and be like Ew, gross uh so here here's my here's my meet you in the middle um <laughs> i will have a slice of hot apple pie with a scoop of tony's vanilla ice cream okay, on top of it. okay. that's a legit mm. yeah. that's a legit substitute if i'm putting ice cream on my apple pie which is the thing that i prefer it'll be tony's vanilla okay very good. So we'll stay with you, Robert, with this next one. Sun drop or cheer wine? Cheer wine. Cheer Same. wine all day. 100%. Cheer wine, both. Yes. Okay. Didn't know how to say it when I got here. I was like, cheer wine? <laughs> it's cheer wine. Cheer wine. Yeah. yeah. You got to say it very quick. <laughs> favorite, uh, Julianne, favorite local restaurant? Web. Hands down. That's best. Probably the never, most, had, never had a bad meal. Probably the most popular answer. Yeah. Literally no. across the street from my office. Yeah, quick cocktail it, it, after work. It's close, isn't it? Boom. Yeah, it's close I mean, to us here, too. Everything. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, <laughs> a Chinese takeout place in Cramerton called Asian Garden. Asian Garden. <laughs> yes. Yes. You know this all is, this about This is it. the episode of firsts. Oh, so it's that's so really good. good. I cannot. Orange I, sherbet and Asian Garden. Yeah, I okay. cannot recommend it enough. It's so good. Well, good. I'll have to write that one down. Uh, check that out. All right, Robert, this is, um, maybe I know the answer to this already, but favorite outdoor activity in Gaston County? Uh, yeah, tree hugging, I guess. Um, <laughs> now, I, I I like to hike. I like to walk. I like to be in the okay. woods. I like to get as far away from anything concrete or impervious as I possibly can. There were we're running out of spaces like that around here, but we do have Crowder's Mountain, which is nice. So yeah. there's still quite, a, and the greenways are very nice. Uh, so yeah, hiking. And then some of the you know newer sections of the Carolina Thread Trail are, are nice. Yes, uh, nice absolutely. as well. I've been on the one, I guess, around. Um, Stuart Kramer High School and there yeah. between Belmont and Cramerton. Yeah, that's yeah. a that's a nice uh, section. Julianne, what about you? Well, I've got two boys, so we are hitting up every park there ever could be in Gasson County. I would say their favorite is Goat Island, just because it's like epic. You run across yeah, the bridge, go, yeah, Goat Island you is get great. there, yeah. and then there's like, well, we have to go to the bathroom. Well, back over the bridge we go <laughs> again. Go, yeah. So they also enjoy the Post and Park um, Pump Park. Yeah, post is oh, great. Yeah. They're not they're not like BMX kids, but everything yeah. everybody there is they're just like super respectful and always helpful and like they cheer people on. They know these kids are not bikers by any means, but they're like, That was awesome, man. So I think they really that really was very encouraging. And, that's a, to and them again, once. that's another un, unique little uh thing in Gaston County. Yeah. Right? And some people might not even know about it. In no. fact, we had Gaston County parks and rec on. We're gonna need we need to have the city Parks and Rec Ooh. on here yeah, for, totally for, for an episode. You should, especially with Linwood coming up, yeah. so yeah. that would be awesome. All right, so I'll stick with you, Julianne. This is Uh-oh. a question that I ask uh, just because I can, um, and there is a there is a there is a correct answer, but you could there could also be multiple answers. So, UNC Duke or NC State? Well, I'm going to be another first because none of them. Ooh. Michigan, go blue. Mm. I know. Oh gosh, I, I I I can't. Of course, help you know it. this year. Not I, from here, man. Yeah. This year, especially <laughs> football season, I'm sure you uh, enjoyed the uh, Ohio State game this I year. I wouldn't. Yeah, well, yeah. yes, that was <laughs> pretty epic. So well, I don't watch the sport as much as my husband, the children, and I have to tolerate it. I'm also like a football widow all fall. So, um, but oh, yeah. I, Michigan. I mean, we have more Michigan gear in our house, and our kids have never, probably even been to Michigan. So, <laughs> very good, <laughs> Robert. Sorry. What about you, State? 
Okay, very good. I was assuming maybe with forestry and arborist background. Hey, yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, More of that, please. Yes, so I appreciate that. We're, we're, we're few in number yep. around oh. here, so we need all the support we can get. And the, so I appreciate you clapping hands. Of yeah, doing the, of course. The that was the right sound, answer. The correct sound effect there, Elizabeth. So, Robert, I'll uh, stay with you. What is something very few people know about you? Oh, oof. That you can share on a family friendly yeah, podcast. Yeah, share on a family friendly podcast. Okay. <laughs> um, very few people know about me. I should have done my homework before. This. Told, I gave you the script. I don't know. Yeah, I'm a, I read it. I'm just. I'm a, this is better. It's if better anything, one. I'm. I overshare every oh, chance I 100%. get. One hundred percent. We. That's why we get along. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's not an appropriate answer. That's not an appropriate answer. One of the other bombshells about me is that I don't really like ice cream. And I've already shared that yeah. as well. What about your rock band? I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, I don't have okay. a rock band. So you're in a rock band. No idea what any of that. Okay. I heard, I've never I heard, heard, I heard, what did you call rumor. it? Rock? I've never I heard of that. I heard a rumor. I don't know. Uh, yeah. I, Robert I, Stroud and the Tree Huggers? <laughs> 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 yes. It's a mouthful. No. Okay. But fair enough. I'm not going to, I won't name them because I don't want to embarrass anybody. Um, but yeah, I play music semi professionally on the side of all of this. Um, under more or less an alter ego. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Is there like video proof online somewhere for this? I've I have never, no I idea. have never seen I just heard rumors. Okay. Couldn't well, answer. Y'all, well, y'all heard it. Y'all heard it here. And where we will, uh, Elizabeth is a great investigative reporter. She'll probably never find so, it. You'll uh, never find it. <laughs> well, we'll see about that. <laughs> all right, Julianne, what about you? Well, going back to the trees, I actually was my sorority's mascot, which was a squirrel. And squirrel. I used to like put on a cost like the whole uniform had a backpack because this the tail was super heavy, so I had to have a little backpack on and would go around campus and you can think about inappropriate jokes. What, why does a soror- why does a sorority need a mascot? Like, what are you going to? I, I don't know. Just is there inter sorority sports oh, that I don't know about? I can't even talk about that. Okay, fair enough. Squirrel that sounds like something related to. ADHD or something, didn't that? <laughs> didn't what everybody says? Squirrel, squirrel, squirrel. No. Distractions. Okay. We're weird. I'm not sure. Where, I'm not. Can't sure even where, go from I'm there. I'm not sure where to go I'm with sorry. after that. No. <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna <laughs> move on from that. that odd, interesting. That's strange. But no. that is the reason for that question. Actually, you never know what you're gonna hear. So, Julianne, what about a book you would recommend or, or a blog or article, anything that well, you follow that our listeners might benefit from? This is a problem. So my husband is the reader of the family, and he every time he finishes the book, he's like, this book was amazing, puts it on my nightstand, and it sits there <laughs> until he puts the next one, and then I move that to my closet. And so I haven't had a book to read because – I just rather rather watch TV. I'll be honest. Right now, when my kids go to bed, I'd rather just veg. Uh oh, is there a no no sound? Oh, oh, crickets! I know. I'm sorry because I even asked my husband. I was like, "Just tell me the book last book you read." And he's like, "I am not <laughs> That's feeding funny. into this." He's uh, like, "You have to be honest and tell them the truth that you haven't read a book in a while." So there's okay, my well, story. Well, Robert, oh we'll my move God, on. I'm we'll, just ruining we'll, this whole we'll, podcast. We'll move on to you. I can <laughs> I, Robert. Is it okay if I overcompensate for her lack <laughs> yes, of research? Yes, you sure Please. can. Absolutely. Right. Save can. this. I Save the end of it. Several things. Uh, I'm a big podcast listener myself. Okay, um, very good. Yeah. So uh, one of the things I think everyone should go out and listen to immediately, because it's probably the most fascinating thing that I can think of in the last uh, couple of years, is um, Radio Lab. Obviously, there's a big, you know, podcast thing. They do little news stories and science stories and things like that. And then one of the most recent ones they did is called Forests on Forests. And it goes into the phenomena that in old forests, very old forests, soil can actually collect high up in the canopy. It's tree litter, leaves, things like that, small twigs. Uh, And in this soil that's nestled among the tangle of the upper canopy, other plants can grow. There's a species of salamander that has, as far as we know, never touched the ground as far as it's been alive. There's earthworms that grow up there. There are trees that can grow other types of trees out of the soil. Uh, there are trees that can put off roots from, well, I don't want to, I don't want to spoil it. Go listen to it. Okay. But, um, but it, it's fascinating. It's, you, you start thinking about these things in, in a much different way. A book that I read recently that is absolutely brilliant and also kind of very sad, uh, it's the... I can't remember exactly what it's called, but it's the it's the biography of Alexander von Humboldt, uh, who a lot of people 
uh, described as being like the first naturalist, the first environmentalist. He was this, uh, I think, Dutch or, or Austrian. Sorry, my phone's going off. Um, uh, scientist back in you know in uh, I think pre Darwin days and a lot of a okay. lot of his stuff. He was an explorer. He went to South America, and this this biography traces his his route through South America and then goes back and looks at what they are now, which is kind of the sad part. But uh, <laughs> it's a really interesting look at, at the at the evolution of of naturalism as a science or environmentalism as a science, okay. um, and to see that we didn't start thinking about the world that way until kind of recently. Sure. Um, Very good. And then oh, no, I'm going to keep oh, going. Oh, no. no, no you're, yeah. done. you're done. You're <laughs> done. Okay. Uh, and then you should also follow the KGB uh, Facebook page because we post stuff on there. Okay. There about our yes. various projects. And we'll, we'll uh, get Elizabeth, her investigative skills to, to maybe look up uh, Von Humboldt. Is that correct? Von Humboldt. Yes. Okay. Wow. Alexander Von Humboldt. Huh. I think it's just called Ale- Von Humboldt, a biography. I okay. Think. Um, Very good. It's, yes. it's a it's a page turner. It's a great book. I'm feeling real dumb over. So here. I appreciate you indulging on those questions, um, except for Julianne on the last question. <laughs> <laughs> but we're going to finish up just a few more questions, and you know, maybe uh, to start with you on this question, Julianne. Besides, keep Gaston you beautiful. Why is Gaston County such a great place? Well, it's become home to us. I mean, truly, we have watched this town and the whole county grow right before our eyes, and I think that has been just. I mean, I will tell you, when we first drove here, I was like, let's go to Main Street, Gastonia, and check things out. And I was like, wow. But then, like, working for the city and seeing it just grow and grow, and we have a stadium. I mean, we are just, like Robert said, we're just yeah. we're becoming not just a little city anymore. We're, we're, we're on the map for sure. So, but we, I mean, we have kids here. We just, we made a life here. And I think that's been because we wanted to stay. I mean, we, we haven't ever wanted to leave, honestly. Right. So, and then the whole whole dang family came too so now we really can't leave so <laughs> yeah i think you i think robert may mention this earlier but yeah the things that are previously happening happened in iredale county and cabarrus county and union county and york county to the south are now you know beginning to happen here unfortunately right. maybe we were last kind of on that list but you know what that's right. that's good it's it's we we can learn a lot from what those um counties experienced sure. and what they what they've done so uh, Robert, how would you answer that question about wine? Besides, keep guests on you beautiful. I, you know, um, my my stock answer would be come for the trees. Um, <laughs> but uh, I, you know, I I don't think so. But I would like to go in a little bit. There is something about this place that catches people, and Julian's a, a really great example of that. Obviously, whole families here, but my family also came from you know Chicago. Like, why? I've asked them many times, like, why here? You could go yeah. have gone anywhere else. Why here? And I don't know, there's just something about visiting this place and being around here. You're like, oh, man, this is, it, don't, it almost feels like a hidden gem, but there's enough people here that it's not really a hidden gem. It's, mm-hmm. There's a big community going on, too. So um, I don't know. So my answer is whatever that intangible quality is yeah. that you can't really put into words. It's, just, um, it's great. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a unique place. I mean, physically, you know, close to the mountains, close to the coast. We've got this strange thing called Crowder's Mountain just happens to be in Gaston County. Exactly. That, you know, we, and that's another one we take for granted because I you drive through down to 85 and I've had, heard people say, wow, what is that? What do you mean? What is that? That's Crowder's Mountain. That's our mountain. Yeah, it's just here. Do you, you not know? have a mountain? But if we you look around, there's nothing really else. You know, that in Kings Mountain, there's that's just nothing true. else like that yeah. you know, for, for a few more hours drive. So um, I appreciate you guys uh, sharing that. And I, th- I think I say this about a couple of questions, question, but this really is my favorite question. <clears throat> I'll start with you, Robert. <clears throat> Excuse me. Knowing what you do now, what advice would you give your twenty-year-old self? Uh, oh. wait, wake up, get, uh, get wake up from the nap that you're taking, <laughs> and do your college homework, and get a better grade than a B. Um, no, honestly, um, you said B. Was that on purpose? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, I. She's not the only person who does puns. All right, I'm pretty okay at it myself. <laughs> anyway, um, you can edit that out. Um, <laughs> You know, honestly, this it sounds a little self-congratulatory, but if I could go back in time and talk to my 20-year-old self, I would just say, keep doing what you're doing. You're going to end up in the spot that you need to end up in. I just, I, I really good. have yeah. no regret, regrets. It feels like a very straight line in my life, and I like where I am. I like what I did to get here. Yeah, very good. That's a good one. He is, I, I call him like a, an M&M, hard shell, soft inside. I mean, <laughs> geez, Louise, you would never know. But <laughs> mine is, I think, just enjoy this time of life. I think you don't realize how good you have it when you're 20. <laughs> yeah. And then you have no responsibilities and you get married, you have a mortgage, you have kids and yeah. life is 
very complicated after that. So. Yeah, perspective. Uh, yes. This is something we've often talked about for that question is it, it also comes down to perspective and the fact that it takes age and experience to have perspective. Yeah. I mean, I don't know that I've discovered any other way to do it. I've been trying to get my kids some perspective and, you know, it's just hard when you're when you're 20 mm-hmm. uh, to do that. We know it all. Yeah. yeah. My yeah. grandfather used to say there's no intelligent life before 30. And it's, <laughs> it's just been my favorite thing ever. Yeah, that's probably pretty accurate. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Elizabeth, sorry, girl. Well, I mean, you're different. Yeah. An old soul. That's 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 actually a pretty good description mm-hmm. for yeah. Elizabeth. He's in, she was born an old soul. So, um, guys, this has really been terrific. So, again, this is kind of the main point. Obviously, everything you've shared. But so, where can our listeners go to learn more? Uh, get involved. Are there any events coming up? I think you mentioned one earlier, but yeah, any, anything you want to share so they know how to how to get get more awareness about the organization. Shameless plug time, of course. Follow Absolutely. us on social media. We are on Facebook, Instagram. We even have a YouTube page that has some educational pieces. The rock um, band videos. I don't know anything about that. No, uh, we've got our Shred Day, which is probably our most popular day. That okay. is, we do that twice a year. So the next one's coming up on April twenty third at the Gastonia Farmers Market, where people bring their sensitive documents to be shredded on site. They can actually watch them shred, which is some people do. They pull over and watch their stuff being shredded. So, but last that sounds time, very KGB. That is yeah. very KGB. Very so, does. but last time we um, we had about three hundred and eighty people come through the line in four hours. Hmm. That's insane. Wow. It's, That's a lot. It, yeah. I'm telling you, it is popular. Wow. So some people get there at seven. There's a man that always gets there. He has his little biscuit, his coffee. Is he waits till we start the trucks up? Boom. So. We've also got our black gold sales. Uh, the dates are all on our Facebook page and online. But that is leaf mulch that we sell, and that's um, pure profit for Keep Gas Honey Beautiful to our nonprofit. We've got our Beetopia, which is coming up on May 21st. We have a lot of things. We just, okay. we are doing, it's kind of crazy. Somebody once asked, they're like, wait, so this is a full time job? I was like, and I have staff. Yeah. <laughs> that's the crazy part. I actually have staff that help me get all this done too. So that's, that means that, that there's a value on what we're doing, obviously. So we'll keep that going. Did I see on the website, too, or maybe I, that there was an – is there an open position? Or am I dreaming uh, that? Yeah, well, yes. Yeah, so that it was a school specialist. They okay. paused it right now since Understood. we can't get into the schools. But, yeah. yes, yeah. there is – it's a vacant position right now. And they said once we're allowed surely. back in the schools, we'll ramp it back up. I mean, so. Surely we're going to get back to that soon. I uh-huh. pray. Because yeah. Yeah. that's really what my staff, they love going out and just uh, teaching yeah. kids. I mean, teaching them about recycling and litter and all these amazing stories that we tell them. That's – we've been missing that key piece. So. Gotcha, yep. All right, uh, Robert. Any last words? Anything you'd like to to add before we close this one out? Yeah, I just I just want to get out to whoever's listening. Um, uh, my office, my little urban forestry department, is not off limits to citizens. Please call me any time of the day if you have any questions about trees. If people call me about bees, call me about firewood. What's my favorite tree? Call me about English ivy. Call me. Ask me about your your plants, your soil, your questions, whatever. I'm here for you. You pay me out of your tax dollars. Let me work for you. So, yeah, and you can That's find and, and, I, and I easily found you, uh, Robert, on the through yeah. the guest the city of Gastonia website, and and by yeah. just googled and keep Gastonia beautiful will take you to the city of Gastonia website where you can you can find that. So. Um, it, it's really yeah any finding anything you need to know about the organization is easy to find um, online. So. I would encourage our listeners um, to go out and do that. So, guys, I, I appreciate your time uh, very much, and we're going to finish up here with what I do every episode is my own book recommendation and maybe a quote or, or thought for the week. Let me get my pencil ready. Okay. <laughs> All right. So uh, I've shared a few biographies, and one that I uh, – one of my favorites, and I'm a big fan of Walt Disney, and uh, Bob Thomas wrote – I mean, you can find plenty of biographies on Walt Disney, but Bob Thomas wrote one called Walt Disney, an American Original, and that's kind of considered, you know, the quintessential um, you know, biography about Walt Disney. And, again, he's just uh, somebody that I a- admire for what he accomplished, and, you know, it's a lot of fun too. And my kind of – my quote of the week, I, I it would have been so easy for me to just pull one of Walt Disney's quotes related to that, but I decided to go a different direction and something that maybe describes – Walt Disney, and uh, knowing what we were going to talk about today, um, I pulled one from Ralph Waldo Emerson who said, do not go where the path may lead, go instead where there is no path and leave a trail. 
So again, uh, to me that that quotes about leadership and courage. Maybe it's just easy to you know, it's easy to do the same old thing and follow the follow the crowd, but that's really not how things um, things really change and, and things happen. So um, that's one of my again another quote that I really like from from Emerson. So to our listeners out there, thanks so much for taking the time to listen to today's episode. Please spread the word if you can about the podcast, and please don't hesitate to contact us here at our email address at podcast at gastonsgreat.com. We actually got some emails this week. How about that? So, you know, wow, (laughs) that's special. Coming up in the world. Yeah, really. (laughs) We're always looking for suggestions for future podcast topics and guests. You can find the podcast and subscribe at our website, gastonsgreat.com, or anywhere you listen to podcasts. Please follow us on our uh, all our social media platforms. And I'm sure this is going to be like, if you could get a higher rating than five, I'm sure this is going to be it. But, you know, again, I say this every week. Elizabeth tells us five-star ratings to help us get noticed. And so please go ahead and do that. Four stars or less? No, we don't. We don't. Just don't rate us at all if it's going to be less than that. <laughs> so many thanks again to uh, Julianne and Robert for being our guests today. Gaston's Great is produced and brought to you by Amy Anderson and Elizabeth King from GSM Services and edited here locally by the Sumner Group. I'm your host, Stephen Long. Thanks again for hanging out with us, and please keep coming back to hear more reasons why Gaston's great.